I left when I was 17, but on my 18th birthday, that's when we landed here. We landed here um, the morning of uh, July, July 21st, 1944. At that time, I was about, uh, uh, I went in, I enlisted when I was 18 years old. So I was, must have been about maybe uh, 21 years old. You know, uh, when we were in, in high school, we had two choices. We knew we had to go in the military. Either you joined the Marines, Army, or Air Force, or you got drafted. So I joined the Marine Corps, and it was quite a surprise uh, being that young and have to go into combat. It, was, uh, it wasn't fun. On the 21st day of July, 1944. It was it was different, and you always wonder what's going to happen from day to day, you know. Because I really had no impression because it wasn't enough to have an impression of it been torn up so bad. <laughs> it was just a, a place of almost nothing, you know, on the beaches anyway. I arrived on Guam on the 24th of July, 1944. They'd been on board ship for 40-some uh, days, uh, but because they run into so much out position at Saipan, that we thought we'd have to go in there. But no, we, we were fortunate we hit Guam. It was more primitive, more jungle-like, nothing, not much development. You had your villages in different sections, uh, small houses, uh, and, uh, and then uh, as the fighting went on, more things were destroyed, and of course uh, your Chamorro people uh, were in concentration camps. So uh, life must have been very miserable and uh, great hardships were done to the Chamorros. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Well, I could see it from the ship. I could see that there was a lot of uh, vegetation and trees and stuff, and uh, that was about my impression. I knew nothing about the island, except they told us that there were some civilians that lived here. That's all I knew. Oh, I'd heard where Guam was. We knew where Guam was, but you know, they never tell you anything until you're at sea and then uh, you make the invasion. And uh, uh, first impression, uh, I enjoy the island. It's a great island. The jungle was all jungle then. There was, there was no hotels or uh, hardly any roads, and it's considerably changed in the last 50 years. Well, it was uh, kind of scary. Uh, being in the war, you know, and uh, mostly my main job was uh, transmitting the message uh, among the, um, on the battlefield, you know, using the Navajo, Navajo coat on the battlefield. That was my main job. So the enemy won't understand what we're talking about, you know. That was the main reason the coat was made. And uh, the, the Japanese were number one coat, coat, coat breaker in the world. They, they, they didn't even break one, one of our coat, even one word. Well, we were kind of amazed having to go uh, through the jungles. They, the, the coastline or the prairies didn't bother us, but it was the, your jungles in the valleys, and uh, in our final battle of Zigo, uh, we were we were kind of surprised. You had a pineapple plantation or a pineapple farm there, and uh, wow, we didn't we didn't expect that. 
when I got hospitalized uh, from the field ho uh, hospital, I, I, I got this uh, coconut. And then when the nurses came, a uh, couple of the nurses uh, brought also with them, you know, uh, magazines and stuff after the campaign was over. And there was a, a magazine called Yank and that had to be sent to GIs all over the world. And so some of the magazines landed here and uh, one of the nurses clipped out uh, a kind of an island girl and I pasted it on and uh, then the nurses helped me send it home to my mother. I was here for the 50th. Mm -hmm. I was here for the 50th liberation. And of course it wasn't nowhere grown like now. I don't know what you did the last 20 years, but you sure were building and building and, and all the cars and all your highways and you did, a, you did a tremendous job. You did a better job than what some of our cities are doing in Michigan. You're growing faster than, than uh, some of our towns uh, in the mainland. You can be sure of that. I didn't rec couldn't recognize a thing here. It was all settled and modern and everything now, just like it was in stateside, you know. And and now a lot of it is better than some of the stuff stateside. <laughs> I was surprised. Everything, large buildings like they have in big cities in the states, nice, clean, smooth highways. A lot of scenery, especially the jungle they used to hack our way through to get through. Those just come up to the road or up to people's backyard. It looks neat. Everything clean and the people are more friendly, willing to help you at anything. I feel good that I had a small part. I was one of many thousands. I don't know just how many, but there was a lot of people that you know, came to take back this place. And it was, we came not necessarily just to liberate the, Jap the civilian people. We came here because our people, uh, military people wanted this because it would be another step towards going for the ultimate victory, you know, over the bad people. So that's what, so. As far as I'm concerned, you know, when, when we were landed here, as I said, we were just doing our job and we were told there were civilians on the island, but that was the extent of our knowledge. We didn't know that so many bad things had happened to them like we were to found out later. I feel good and, I, and the locals are nice. I mean, the people in Guam are some of the nicest people I know of anywhere. I told one of the girls a while ago, I felt like the one that had been liberated instead of <laughs> one that helped do it. It's changed considerably since the 1970s. Uh, there was only uh, uh, the Intercontinental Hotel, Continental Airlines had that hotel, and uh, uh, I've been back many times since then. I come back every March on the way to Iwo Jima with the historical military tours. and. Uh, it, it's unbelievable that, uh, that it changed as much as it has. And uh, now that the visitors are coming in from all different countries, uh, I guess the economy in Guam will be better. And uh, it's, it's nice to see that, that the Guamini people uh, are flourishing. Well, I have told this to the people that have interviewed me here before. It's amazing what you see from each time we have come, how much the improvements have been taken, been done in that length of time and they're still doing it. It's remarkable from the day I first saw it to now. You can't beat the Chamorro people for, I would say, uh, gratitude for us coming to help liberate them. Number two is hospitality and uh, they have good hearts, they're excellent 
American citizens, just just plain wonderful people, down to earth. Washington,